Channel welcomes you to a beautiful spring day in Martinsville, Virginia, where today they'll run for the Budweiser Pole Award. 44 NASCAR Nextel Cup cars are at the ready. At this beautiful little paperclip shaped short track, what a change from two weeks ago where we were out in the wide open spaces of the Lone Star State. Matt Kenseth went into Texas as the point leader, came out of there in second place in the standings. Because on the last lap, Elliott Sadler managed to hold off Casey Kane all the way to the finish line by, oh, so narrow a margin. Sadler not only got the win, he got a big boost to the next Tell Cup standings, up to fifth place behind Kurt Busch. Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Tony Stewart. There's your top ten with Ryan Newman's teammate Rusty Wallace just one spot out. And here are the drivers, some of whom are short track specialists that are looking in and outside the 400-point cutoff for the final ten race chase for the championship. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Martinsville. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds. Uh, coming back to one, my, it's, this is my favorite racetrack. I love the Daytona 500, some of the big events, but there's just such a hometown flavor and feel to this place, unless, of course, you're a crew chief or a fabricator or a body man. And especially if spring has sprung. It is hot here today, and I tell you, the biggest challenge for these drivers and these crew chiefs is getting that 800 horsepower to hook up off these corners, even on fresh tires in qualifying. We saw a lot of fast speeds in practice. Jeff Gordon leading the brigade, if you can believe that, but <laughs> It's such a challenge. The track temperature has come up another 20 degrees since practice, just getting those rear wheels to hook up off those corners onto those straightaways. Well, if you talk Martinsville, in recent years, you have to talk about Jeff Gordon. He's had such tremendous success at this speedway in the DuPont number 24, resplendent in flames. Let's have a look at his record here. Five wins, four poles, 16 top 10 finishes, and, of course, the sweep last season. Dick Berger, and one reason Jeff Gordon is so successful finishing races here is he puts himself in a position to win right from the start. Oh, boy, does he ever. Jeff Gordon is the favorite to win the pole again today. He has won the pole here three years in a row for the spring race. The worst he has started here in the last three years, six tries, is third. One practice today. Got the car he won with the, the pole and the race with last year. Jeff Gordon, how do you do this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, these guys just continue uh, to put a great race car underneath me. We came here many, many years ago and made a bunch of laps. And, you know, I found a little something that, that gave me some confidence. And ever since then, we just we work on, you know, that same line and just getting me the feel that I need to, to get the car to, to roll through the center of the corner. And we fought a little bit this morning uh, with this new tire, but uh, seemed to come around pretty good there towards the end of practice. Hopefully we made the right adjustments and we can get us another one. He's the favorite to win the poll today. Let's go to another favorite, Jeff Hammond. That's right, Dick. Last time we saw Casey Kane, he was finishing second at uh, Texas. And today you're fourth on the board. You tested here at Martinsville, but this is your first trip. What do you think about Martinsville? It's a tough track. It's, uh, you know, we've been learning a lot. Um, we had a few problems there at the end of practice and didn't run a good lap at the end. We ran real fast at the start. So hopefully we change some brakes and we'll get the, you know, the Dodge Steelers UAW Dodge up towards the front. What about the track temperature? You compensated for that any? I don't know. We were off at the end of practice, so we just kind of got the car back to where we started, and hopefully it'll be all right with the track temp. Mike, Larry, he's hoping everything will work out well for him today during qualifying. Well, so far this year, it's been a good season for Casey Kane. Rusty Wallace talking with one of his protégés, Brendan Gaughan, and Dale Jarrett with one of his. <laughs> Michael Waltrip trying to turn things around here as well. It's a big weekend of racing here at Martinsville Speedway across the Fox Networks. Tomorrow you'll see Nextel Cup final practice on FX Live at 11 and the Kroger 250 Craftsman Truck Series race on speed. Sunday the Advanced Auto Parts 500 is on Fox 1 p.m. Eastern Time right back here to speed for Speed News NASCAR Edition and NASCAR Victory Lane. Stay tuned for Budweiser Pole Qualifying. Speed Channel coverage of NASCAR Budweiser Pole Qualifying from Martinsville is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Around these parts, trouble doesn't stand a chance. We're ready in advance. By Bombardier ATV. See the Outlander Max, made for one or two riders. Bombardier, follow no one. 
and by YJ Stinger, the extreme energy drink. Catch the buzz and feel the sting. 44 cars are here at this paperclip shape, Martinsville Speedway, including the rookie crop led by Casey Kane, who's off to a really fast start. Scott Wimmer, Bush Champ Ryan's Vickers, Johnny Sauter, Brendan Gaughan from out of the Craftsman Truck Series, and Scott Riggs from the NASCAR Bush Series are your top half dozen in rookie points. Here's Dick Bergeron. With Brendan Gaughan, one of the rookies, and I just watched you. You were over talking to Rusty Wallace, one of the real veterans here with six wins. He's your teammate. What Rusty tell you about this place? And so there ain't enough tape. There ain't enough tape to tell you what exactly Russ has been telling me. We uh, just trying to help me out. You know, that's what that's what's great about having him as him and Ryan as teammates. They both try to help me out. And half our setup is what Rusty has. The other half is what Ryan has. Just help me out on how to break going in. We had some breaking issues. How to watch out for the hump getting out because we've been breaking a little loose. And just some just some quick tips on it real quick on how to get it done. What they tell you about braking, since brakes are always a factor here in this race. We're just talking about qualifying right now, and we uh, we were working on trying to lock, not lock up the left front, but not lock up the rears. I messed up and hurt some practice time because I locked up the rear brakes really hard, did some wheel hop, trying to get that balanced out. So I uh, told him what Shane, my crew chief, and Roy were talking about. Kind of liked what we did and thinks it'll work. Point of interest, these cars do not have ABS, as do most of the cars on the highway. ABS, the uh, initials for the German translation, they invented anti-lock brakes. Now, this racetrack, Larry, not only is it a paperclip, have tight turns, two different surfaces. Yeah, I mean, we go to Bristol, we go to Dover, we were at Nashville last week with the Bush cars, that's a concrete surface. Then, of course, most everywhere else we go is asphalt surfaces, but Martinsville is very unique because if you see, we've put two different temperatures up here. We've put concrete and we've put asphalt. These straightaways are asphalt and the corners are concrete and that's where the challenge really comes i talked about in the opening hooking this car up off the corner getting the rear wheels to bite it's when it makes that transition from the concrete to asphalt that you'll want to get that rear wheel spin on acceleration now you see the asphalt to the outside of the corner don't go there no that's sir a, that is uh, that's headed for the wall land up there and there's that transition right there that's where you're on concrete you go to asphalt right there and that's where it gets real tricky and the, the guys in qualifying that can get their car to hook up they'll be the runs to run the quickest regardless of what happened in practice first driver up has had like Jeff Gordon, tremendous success here. Rusty Wallace will be, that's not his car, <laughs> but thank you for the image. <laughs> He's going to be the first guy. I hope his car runs better than that. Here we go. There's the Miller Lite Dodge. Rusty was 18th quickest in practice. Now, a little unique qualifying format here because they enter the racetrack off of turn two. This lap right here starts a get up to speed lap. They are not actually under the clock. Now, we will actually get that lap on our computer score, and we'll kind of keep up with that to see who really gets going in a hurry because that's the whole challenge is getting these cold tires to hook up to this racetrack, not slide the front end, not be loose on the rear. There was a seven race period when Rusty won five of those seven and had eight consecutive top three finishes. He has two top 10 finishes here in the last three races, and he hasn't started outside the top 10 here since 1999. Always good on qualifying day. Pretty good get up to speed lap, 2065. You know, Rusty's become quite the avid golf fan. I guess uh, on his off weekend last week, he went down and watched the Masters. I hear you. Rusty has about seven or eight sets of golf clubs. He can't figure out which set he wants to use. Two or three of those sets don't have any broken clubs, do they? <laughs> Probably not. 25-56, picks it up. That's his first official lap for Rusty Wallace. Checker there. 2047 and, and we'll probably see that pretty consistent that you'll just get quicker as it goes this because heat in the tires the tires are hooking up the, the further you run into uh, into your qualifying run rusty 11th in points coming in here and it's posted back-to-back -back top five finishes first time he's done that in three years well let's get all the favorites out of the way right away jeff gordon's next as we mentioned, he was quickest in practice at a 20-32. Pole sitter in four of the last five races here. I'm sorry, four of the last six. And 
interestingly, Larry, he has never failed to finish a Martinsville race in his entire cup career. And that in itself is a feat to be accomplished. There is no question. Being at the end of this race is a big, big key. Jeff's first lap is a 20.68. That's about what Rusty ran on his get up to speed lap. But yeah, the numbers here on Jeff just phenomenal, Mike. And those 22 starts you saw, average start 6.5, average finish 8.5. 2025, I mean, that is an awesome lap. This lap should be quicker if uh, things hold true to form. And you see our Fox tracks right there on the the checkered flag that indicates the pole spot. Boy, that car just squatted and took off from turn four. It, it, those rear wheels definitely hooked up off the corner. Will he make the 19s? Don't quite think so. He actually slowed down on that oh, he did. lap. Oh, Gosh, yep. 22, 2287, so the lap did not post. Last year, on this weekend, there's Jeff Gordon driving hard toward victory lane. Last October, same song, second verse. A Martinsville sweep for Jeff Gordon. You know, that grandfather clock at Martinsville Speedway is one of the most coveted trophies in all of motorsports, like the guitar at Nashville last week. Morgan Shepard in the John Deere number 89 has one of those clocks. He has 33 Martinsville starts and one here as a rookie for Jack Beebe's Race Hill Farms team. Actually, it was, no, Cliff, it was Cliff Stewart. Stewart. Cliff Gosh, Stewart. you're right, Cliff Stewart. Yeah, Cliff and Stewart. Spectrum Furniture Pontiac. Yeah. He went on to win some races for Jack. That's right. You saw Morgan has one Bud Pole here back in 1987. That was actually my first Bud Pole as a crew chief with Morgan driving for Kenny Bernstein in the 26 car. Morgan's first lap is 2078. That's about what he ran in practice. Morgan missed the show at Texas. I don't think Morgan picked up on his second nope. lap. Knob slowed down just a little bit. Here's Jeff. We caught up here with Rusty Wallace, second fastest. You've got eight straight top ten starts here. Can you keep it up today? Gosh, I don't know. That's not where I wanted to qualify. I thought I'd be a little faster than I'd tell you the truth. I hope we have a good run with that. Jeff's run was real quick. I've been off about a tenth all through practice and been really hunting to find it. It's a brand new car. We didn't test it here, but I really feel like it's going to race good. I really do. It's got a, kind of a real racy feel to it, but uh, I, I'm not real happy with the way I qualified. You may not be happy the way he qualified, but you can always look for this guy to be up front when it counts. Dick Bergren? Well, 48-year-old Ken Schrader is one of the most popular drivers in this series. Last year, he qualified fourth, and the grandstands were rocking. What do you got for him today, Kenny? I have to get back with you there, Dick. We were we were like 30th uh, before qualifying last year, and we were 28th this uh, today uh, with the same time as last year. Car, uh, Schwann's car feels good, so we'll just have to see what we we'll wind up with here. I guess it's up to the driver then, huh? Well, he's, he's capable of doing good some days, and some days he really messes up bad. Watch him. Today he's going to do good. Watch him. Hey, he's on a couple of pretty good finishes. Had a great run at Bristol a few weeks ago. Pretty solid run at, uh, at Texas as well. Michael Walter with the Napa Chevy. Six top ten starts here. Three top ten. No, four top ten finishes. Three sevenths and an eighth. And Michael trying to get his season back on track. He's, uh, as, as we say, dug a big hole for himself the first few races of this year if he's going to make that top ten. But he obviously has his Bush Series on top of the game, wow. winning at Nashville and now leading the Bush Series points. 2077, Michael picks it up, so he's third quickest out of four cars right now. Jeff? Well, I'm here right now with Jeff Gordon and Buddy. The beat goes on. Started the pole last year. Both races, won both of them. Looking pretty good so far. Well, it's going to be a, a long wait here. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. That was a, I felt like that was a really good lap just based on feel, based on practice earlier. Felt like we made all the right adjustments and, and right, you know, air pressure and everything. Um, you know, I, I, I thought I could go a little bit faster on the last lap, but the thing came in pretty quick. These tires are a little bit softer, so it might not take the second lap. And, um, you know, two solid laps, so we can't ask for much more than that. We'll uh, kind of keep our eye on the TV and, and the times and, and see where we end up. I guarantee you one thing, guys, when it comes to being patient and understanding what it takes to win here, this is the guy. You know, Mike, we talked about this a few weeks ago during the Bristol qualifying show. 
Another reason it's so important to qualify here is pit selection. Yeah. And that's where Jeff Gordon has had that advantage. He sits on the pole, he gets that number one pit spot right as you leave pit road, and that's a huge advantage here. Brendan gone already on his first time lap is the third quickest, Jeff. Larry, you're talking about how important it is as far as qualifying is concerned here at Martins. We'll talk to a lot of crew chiefs, and in their minds, this could be the most important qualifying session so far this year because they know that more damage gets done sometimes on pit road than it does on the racetrack. So qualifying well helps to keep you out of the, uh, the trouble areas as far as the racetrack is concerned. Well, I believe Brendan listened to his boss, Rusty Wallace, so. because he just outran him. Brendan's going to be second quickest in his qualifying run. Four one-hundredths of a second faster than Rusty Wallace and just about two tenths back of Jeff Gordon who is quickest so far so the Kodak Dodge for Brendan gone has a very strong run. Matt Kenseth the defending cup champion finished second here in 2002 in this race has yet to post a top 10 qualifying effort here in 10 starts and he was uh, about 21st quickest in practice and as we well know Matt and this group is not known for their qualifying efforts but yeah just to follow up on Jeff what Jeff's talking about this pit road goes from turn three all the way to turn two and it's very narrow and the pit boxes are very small but we do we see about as many wrecks on pit road sometimes as we do on the racetrack it's true Matt had a pretty decent get up the speed lap 2090 of course remember Jeff Gordon and uh, Rusty Wallace was in the 2060s First time lap 2061, which is fourth of six. Larry, we'll get a look at it later, but some drivers said that the reason they don't like to pit in turn one or two is because that pit road is so curved so sharply they have trouble finding their individual pit to get in. Yeah, I think the only good pit down there in one and two, Mike, is if you sit on the pole and you can pick that very last pit because the biggest advantage there, you know where you're going, it's the last pit box and you only have to move a few feet to beat everybody else off pit road under caution. So Matt Kenseth is fourth of six so far. Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia, where Jeff Gordon, Brendan Gaughan, Rusty Wallace, and Matt Kenseth are the four fastest so far. Stanton Barrett in this number 94 Chevy owned by David Watson is the one go or go home car here. Larry has no provisionals, no attempts, so he must time in the in the top 38 to be able to race on Sunday. But Mike, if he could just mirror what he did in practice, he was 37th quickest, so that would put him in. And uh, his get up to speed lap is this decent, and I'm gonna tell you, a pretty decent first lap, 2063. I don't think this lap's gonna be any better because he was pretty loose off that last corner, but that 2063 may very well put him in the show. As we said, that's his one shot to get in. The second lap is indeed slower. Let's show it to you. He had already completed his first lap, and then he went down through one and two. Good chance it felt so good the first time through there. He's going to try to pick it up a little sooner coming off turn two the second lap, and there's that transition, and he's very lucky that it didn't come on around with him. Yep. When that car's sliding sideways, it's not accelerating forward at that point. Jeff? Guys, I'm down here with Brendan Gone. Brendan, where'd that come from, and man? You beat the teacher. What's going on here? Nah, uh, you know what? I promised Roy McCauley and Shane. I said I thought I thought our Kodak Dodge they had between a 40 and a 45. So I hit my number. That's uh, we knew we did it. I kind of messed up. The guys in practice cost us some practice time, which in the next Hell Cup series you can't do. It was my fault. And we hit our number, so I'm pretty happy. What about the race on Sunday? Race on Sunday is going to be a lot different than qualifying on Friday. You know, uh, going to be a lot more rubber down on the racetrack from the Craftsman Truck Race. You know, a lot, lot 500 laps around this place. It's going to wear you out. You got to keep your brakes underneath me. That's what Rusty and, and Ryan have been telling me for the last two weeks is that you got to keep your brakes. You got to keep your brakes. So that's a key to Martinsville. Larry, you know all about those keys in Martinsville. You got to save those brakes. Yes, sir. And, and that's, you know, you heard Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace as we're watching Jeremy Mayfield's corner here. Ray Abraham look at his stopwatch 2068 for Jeremy on his first lap, it puts him six quickest. But yeah, this is definitely a place here. It almost reminds me a little bit of a road course because how you get in the corner almost dictates the entire center and exit of the corner. You just can't overdrive the entrance to the corner. It's been really interesting to watch the evolution of the cup cars here at Martinsville and the techniques of driving them. For about 10 years, all the focus was on big brakes and getting the car stuffed down hard into the corner. And then 
Uh, and maybe it was with the advent of the rear sway bar, maybe not. But then the whole focus became getting off the corner and carrying all the speed down the straightaway. Then you maximize that. Now you need bigger brakes again. There's <laughs> the no end to it, is Just there? keep making better brakes. But that's a great qualifying run for Jeremy Mayfield. He's second quickest right now behind Jeff Gordon. Dick? Well, Jimmy Johnson, you were third quick in practice today. Your teammate, your good buddy Jeff Gordon, has blistered him. How close is your setup to his? Uh, you know, for once, we're not really that similar. We came up and tested for a day and tried some stuff, and our race package just really worked well for us. So and now it's time to go out and put together a smooth lap. This is one of the toughest places to sit and then climb back in the car and go out and qualify again. So uh, Why is that? Just because it's such a rhythm. I mean, and you're looking, you're on such a fine line to, to have a good lap because the field is so tight, and it's so easy to cross the line and make a mistake. So um, this is a tough one. I'm, uh, I'm more worried about qualifying here than anywhere else because pit, uh, pit pick is so important, and it's so easy to make a mistake. But well, these loads guys have been working their butts off, and uh, we should have a great uh, qualifying effort, I hope. Good luck with it. <laughs> Kenny Schrader. The Schwann's Home Service Dodge, fifth of nine on his first lap, so that'll be solidly in the field. And it was one year ago that he had a top 10 finish here, finished 10th, and qualified fourth. He had a great car all day long. And we talked about 44 cars here, and looking at people like Stanton Barrett, they have to beat six cars to make sure they're in this field. And so far, he's beaten two, Michael Waltrip and Morgan Shepard. Kenny basically runs the same speed on both laps. So Schrader is fifth fastest. Happiest man in the house, right there on the right of your screen, Elliot Sadler, who had two weeks to celebrate winning in Texas. Normally, Darrell would join us for qualifying, but he's down there watching it on Speed Channel. In his driver's suit, he is qualified 21st for tomorrow's race here at Martinsville, the Kroger 250. Jack Sprague and Chad Chaffin have the front row, a Chevy and a Dodge. And you'll see it right here on Speed Channel tomorrow, 1 p.m. Yeah, Eastern hey, time. Hey, Y'all be down here helping me. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there in a minute, Daryl. How about that uniform? Has those flames on it? Somebody tell him work comes first. <laughs> Somebody has to work for a living, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hammond said that suit looked like Jaws, not Flames. I, I think they're Flames. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Todd Bodine and the Lucas Oil number 98 Ford. Now, this team does have provisional points, but if Stanton Barrett times into the field, Bodine would be lowest among those car owner provisional points. So he pretty much needs to post a solid lap here, and he's slower than Stanton Barrett. And that could be trouble at day's end. Yeah, he pretty much mirrored what he ran in practice, but uh, I don't think that's going to be quite good enough. Dick? With Elliot Sadler. And you know what? This guy has smiled the entire time he's been at Martinsville. It's been this big grin on his face. Two weeks you've been a winner. What's it been like? Uh, it's been great. It's been great for our whole race team and M&Ms and Robert Yates and everybody involved. Uh, Doug and those guys have been working so hard on the motors, they hadn't even got a chance to come to the track and to be able to put, get a victory for them was something special. Was indeed. Congratulations. Everybody was happy for you. Qualified fifth here last year, Mike. Thanks, Dick. Thank you. Derek Cope on the speedway. Until last year, Cope had never used a provisional here at Martinsville to make the field, and he's been racing here since 1986. But last year, uh, with his own effort, he had to take a provisional in both races. He did, though, however, get his first career top 10 finish at this speedway in the Winston Cup that came in 1986 in his first race here, driving for Warren Razor been with nine different teams here in 22 races. Yeah, and these guys somewhat struggled in practice. You see him just the car just all over the place, just can't put that throttle down coming off the corner. He runs a 2075 ninth quickest, but boy, what a great run these guys had at least the first third of the race at Texas a couple of weeks ago and then ran out of fuel and from there the bottom just sort of fell out. But it had to be a great confidence booster for Derek and that entire race team because he drove by the likes of Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, a lot of those guys moving toward the top 10. Oh yeah, certainly it showed the potential of this team as uh, Cope's second lap is right on top of his first. Now he is ninth of 11. Not the best news for Derek, but good news for Stanton Barrett and perhaps Todd Bodine. Here's Jeff. Mike, I stand there a minute ago with uh, Jeremy Mayfield as well as car owner uh, Ray Everham. And y'all made a lot of changes to that race car, and you had a sizable pickup between your first lap and your second lap. Uh, what happened? Well, you know, um, 
car owner, he's got a lot of experience, so he knows all about that stuff. And he helped me a lot, you know, about, uh, we talked about, you know, not abusing the tires, the warm up lap, and then your first lap and save it all for the second. But, uh, you know, the guys obviously give me a good car to do that too. So just a total team effort. And uh, we're just happy that we uh, picked up for qualifying. And we knew, we knew coming into Martinsville, this is going to be one of our week, uh, for my week track anyway. So I don't, I don't like it too much. But to come here and do that and, and real like we have today, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with that ever so far. And now, big smile on both these guys' faces down here in the pit area, Mike. Well, he's second overall and first in class. Uh, Mayfield right now is the fastest Dodge as Bush Series champ Brian Vickers comes out of the speedway for uh, his first try. Don't, uh, you need to remember, folks, the Bush Series does not race here. It did for many, many years, but there's no longer a Bush race here, so I'm not sure if Vickers is getting his first ever look at Martinsville Speedway, but he doesn't have a lot of laps here in any case. Yeah, most of the rookie teams uh, with rookie drivers decided to come up here and test, Brian Vickers being one of those, and he was 14th quickest in practice. His first lap's going to put him ninth quickest at a 20.73. See if he picks it up just a little bit. He does. 2063. That moves him up to eighth quickest. He'll actually tie Stanton Barrett. Seventh and eighth place cars right now have identical speed. NASCAR Budweiser poll qualifying from Martinsville Speedway is brought to you by Budweiser. It's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser. The race is on. The race is on for Columbia, Tennessee's Sterling Marlin, who has three second place finishes here, driving for Billy Hagan, or two second place finishes, Billy Hagan, and for Junior Johnson in 92. And he qualified second here for the Morgan McClure team in 1994. Sterling was uh, 25th quickest in practice. They came up here and tested at a one-day test, but they had a lot of engine woes at that test. I think they actually lost two engines. Good lap, though, for Sterling. Fifth quickest, 2048. You mentioned the Morgan McClure team. Of course, of course Tony Glover was the crew chief there when Sterling was doing that, and uh, Tony's got a birthday tomorrow. I think he'll be about 67 or 77. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, but happy birthday, Tony. He'll actually be 47 years old tomorrow. Probably feels 67 sometimes. Second lap is a 55. Slows up just a bit. So Marlin right now is fifth, which gives us Jeff Gordon's Chevy, and then five Dodges in a row. Dick Bergeron. With Bobby Labonte and his crew chief, Fatback McSwain, and Fatback can't hear you right now, but which is more important, the setup that he puts in the car or the driver for qualifying? Don't listen. The setup. <laughs> <laughs> How much does the driver count for? <laughs> Too much here. That's why it's not doing very good. <laughs> Thank you very much for that report from Pit Road. Mike? That was honest. <laughs> Another honest man. All right, here's the rocket. Ryan Newman. Every other race this season, he's gotten the pole. Rockingham, Atlanta, Bristol. So it's time, but boy, Jeff Gordon's going to be tough to dethrone. But I'll tell you what, that get up the speed lap beat Jeff Gordon's get up the speed lap by two tenths, 2048. Fox tracks, here we go. Mariah Newman and the All Tell Dodge. Looks pretty solid right there. Let's see what he can do. I don't know if it's going to happen on this first lap. 2035, second quickest. And he needs a tenth to knock Gordon off the pole if it can be done. Looks pretty solid right there, halfway down the back stretch. As long as he don't overdrive this corner right here in the car, hook up. Looks pretty good. A little bit of brake. You can see him playing with that throttle. Oh, you believe he lost it right off turn four, Mike. 2033. Just picked up just a little bit. But Mike, when you think about Ryan Newman, the season almost is mirroring last year. Yeah, he has three butt poles, four top ten finishes, but three finishes are 27th the worst. And there you see it right there. Best average start. Uh, Greg Biffle has the best average of all drivers, uh, averaging 6.1. But of course, the points are paid at the finish. That's where the points and the money is paid. And there is Casey Kane, who has certainly had the finishes that not only any rookie, but any veteran would be envious of Casey Kane's start to this season. Another rookie on the racetrack is Johnny Sauter. Started 10th at Bristol, and his best finish 14th at Rockingham. And that car almost got away from him there, Larry. 
as and he it, tries to get some heat in it. Very easy to do on this get up to speed lap because that's when the tires are basically stone cold, no heat whatsoever in them. Johnny was 32nd quickest in practice. You talk about these guys never seeing this racetrack. They did come up here and test, but up until that, about two weeks ago, Johnny had never seen Martinsville except on television. Look at how he picks up the nose and watch it drop down here in turn one. A and lot a, of suspension travel. And a lot of that is but when you roll out of the throttle, that's where you put the brakes on right there, and that makes the nose dive. These cars very soft in the front end, trying to get the maximum amount of grip in the front tires. And they're right there. That's where you try to get that those rear tires to hook up when you put that throttle down. And Sauter will go from 11th to 7th with that second lap. Nice pickup. Good pickup. Two tenths. Jeff Gordon, Chevy, then Ryan Newman, Jeremy Mayfield, Brendan Gaughan, and Rusty Wallace so far at Martinsville. Nice Friday crowd on hand for Budweiser pole qualifying, the Motorcraft Ford of Ricky Rudd. For many, many years, the Wood Brothers, who own this car and are based in nearby Stewart, Virginia, would run just super speedways, the Riverside California road track, and this, their home track, was their only short track race for many years. And for Rudd, who's been racing here since 1977, He's had 25 top 10 Martinsville starts. Yeah, he'll make his 50th career start here on Sunday. Three wins here and four bud poles. He actually got his first career bud pole here in April of 81, driving for the Die Guard race team. Won two poles for Richard Childress, won one for Kenny Bernstein here, and won the race here in 1998, driving for his own team. First lap is seventh. And I know talking to Ben Leslie, his crew chief this morning, they went and tested at Caraway, and he looks pretty good right here. Look at the tracker down there. This is where they had hoped to come and try to get the season turned around. Coming back. Oh, falling off. But he but, picks it up. Yeah, nice pick up the fifth fastest. They'll be Ricky pleased Rudd. with that. It's his 50th start here on Sunday, but he will pass, a friend of ours, for third on the all-time Nextel Cup start list next Dell cup winston cup grand national folks call it what you will it goes back a long ways <laughs> and he will pass daryl waltrip for third on that list sunday and definitely dave marcus is definitely achievable uh, richard petty may be a little bit of a stretch jeff down here with ryan newman and uh, ryan second in practice man it looked like you were so close but she sounded like she got just a little bit loose up off a of turn four on it last lap yeah we were uh, a little tight in the middle a little loose off but a uh, good run for the all tall, all tall dodge man the guys did a good job and uh, um, looking forward to the race this time are you really i know a lot of times when you come to this short track right here but you had a good strong finish in the fall so you are looking forward to sunday yeah we're looking forward to it more than we ever have i'll say that i'm not saying we look forward to it more than other racetracks but uh, more than we ever have a racetrack has been kind of tough for ryan newman but he'll be strong come sunday thanks jeff scott wimmer Another member of a really strong rookie crop of drivers for 2004 in the Bill Davis Cat Dodge. 20.741, no, not what they were looking for. And he picks it up to a top 10 spot, 20.57. And of course, that 57 is actually his first lap, Mike. That 74 was his get up to speed lap. And he was actually pretty quick in practice, 13th quickest. He started 14th at Darlington, his best start this season. Of course, he finished third at Daytona. Picks it up, 2047, six quickest. Good run for Scott. So Jeff Gordon still quickest with his Chevy and a whole fleet of Dodges in the top 10 other than Ricky Rudd's Ford and Johnny Sauter. Seventeen of 44 cars have had a chance at the time clocks here at Martinsville Speedway. Budweiser pole qualifying, Jimmy Johnson, the Lowe's Chevrolet, has three top ten starts this year. Sixth in points and has three top ten consecutive finishes here, but he's never led a lap at this place. Really? Yeah. And his best qualifying here has been seventh. He was third quickest in practice. 2062 on his get up to speed lap. That was a little better than his teammate Jeff Gordon is on the butt pole right now. Last fall, Johnson turned a 26th place start into a second place finish here. He was on track until he drove off into turn three. He looked like the car washed up with him a little bit. This could be a good top three run, but this is just his first lap, 2039. 
He's about a tenth and a half right now off of his teammate Jeff Gordon. He needs seven one hundredths to knock Ryan Newman off the front row. They came up here and did a test, but Chad Canals told me all they worked on was race runs. Car looked awfully sideways off turn four that time. It's a little quicker, but doesn't move him from third on the board. Jeff Hammond is with uh, Racing's Iron Man. I am right now, Mike, Ricky Rudd, Virginia born, driving for a Virginia owned race car team. You guys are trying to turn this season around right now, and it looks like you got a pretty good start here at Martinsville so far. Yeah, Jeff, we're real happy. We got a good race car. I don't think we were able to get everything out of it that we had in it for qualifying. We, we ran what we ran in practice. We thought we'd pick up at least a tenth. We didn't do that. We backed up what we ran in practice, but couldn't get the front end to turn like I needed it to in the middle of the corner. And, uh, you know, we debated about making some changes right before uh, qualifying and said, well, you know, even if we can get 10th to 12th, it'll be a big improvement where we've been qualifying recently. So we got a good race car. It's going to race real well. Looking for a good uh, weekend so far. Started out the right way, Mike. Ricky Rudd currently is sixth. On the other end of the scale, Stanton Barrett, if, he, if one more car is slower than Stanton, he is in the show. Otherwise, he's the going homer as Jamie McMurray takes to the speedway in the Texaco Haviland Dodge. Pretty good get up the speed lap for Jamie, 2056. Finished eighth here last October. Started front row in Rockingham. Second quickest, and that's on his first lap at a 2030. He picks up a little over a half a tenth. He could be on the mark. Looks pretty good right here. As long as the car will turn in the middle of the corner, three and four. Get that bite off. Looks pretty solid, Mike. He needs six one hundredths of a second. And right there, that's where we're seeing so many people lose it. It's just on the exit of turn four. He instead is four one hundredths slower than the first lap. So Jamie McMurray is now second to Jeff Gordon. Nary C, welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia for Bud Pole Qualifying. You see the concrete right there. The temperature is actually coming down just a little bit. When we started, it's 102 degrees. Now it's down 100. But Mike, that's one thing I always liked about this racetrack, especially on a day like today when it's not very cloudy. It's pretty predictable. It stays the same almost through this entire qualifying session. Elliot Sadler, the Texas winner, comes out, Larry, in the M&M's Ford of Robert Yates. And his get up to speed lap 2095, not all that sporty, but he has only one top 30 start here at Martinsville. Yeah, and that was 18th. This place has always thrown him a curve, but he did have a good finish. You, we, in the interview a while ago, you heard him talk about finishing fifth here a year ago, but that is the only top 10 that he has. It's just this place. And I think once you ever figure this place out, it's like Bristol. It's like Jeff Gordon has done. Once you figure it out, it kind of stays with you because, like we said, the track just don't change that much over time. Decent first lap. He's 11th quickest with a 49. Picks it up a whole tenth, and that will move him to fifth. So he's the fastest forward. Could be looking at his best qualifying effort here at Martinsville. Uh, little question of that. <laughs> Comparing last year to this year, Elliot Sadler came in here 20th last season. Today, he comes in fifth to Martinsville with no DNFs. And I know it's early in the season, but the best he's ever finished in the points in five seasons is 20th. Jeff? <laughs> Jamie McMurray and I were kind of laughing down here a second ago when he got out of the car. I said, hey, how was that right there? He said, excuse me, I'm burping up these Martinsville hot dogs already. You've been eating a few of them today, huh? Yeah, I had, um, well, Fatback told me earlier this morning, like at 7.30, if I didn't eat one, I wouldn't qualify good. So I was a trooper, and I went ahead and went over and ate a hot dog. Sounds to me like you might want to go back and eat a few more before Sunday. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the Texaco Avalon Dodge has been, uh, we tested here last week, and I told everyone at the shop that we had about as good of a test as we could have had in race trim, but we struggled in qualifying trim. But um, Donnie made some really good calls today on the car, and um, it was good qualifying trim. Sounds to me like, guys, like he made a good call before qualifying right there with the hot dogs. It's way more information than I needed right there. Yeah, but those <laughs> hot dogs taste really good. <laughs> yes, they do. I don't know about 9.30 in the morning, but they are good. What are those Jesse Jones Franks? <laughs> yeah. They're the reddest Franks you've ever seen. And you get them right there at the concession stand. And I'm, this, I talk about family in Martinsville Speedway, the Earls family and Campbell family that's owned this racetrack ever since it was built. It's a family place. Concession prices are really reasonable. 
I mean, if I was taking somebody to their first ever Nextel Cup race, I'd want to bring them here. I believe that's right. But I believe at 9.30 in the morning, I'd rather have some Kellogg's Corn Flakes like on Terry Labonte here on his sec lap, 20.56. 14th quickest. Terry has 51 career starts here, Mike, but he's never won here. Finished second three times. Led a lot of laps here. Led as many as 164 laps in one race. But he did win a Bush Series race here, though, when the Bush Series did race right. here. The Kellogg's got milk Chevy. And who drew the pill right behind him? They do draw for their qualifying order. And younger brother Bobby Labonte drew the next spot. He'll be the 22nd driver to take time. Right now, Matt Kenseth is the last of the drivers locked into the field. He is 15th quickest. Bobby was 27th quickest in practice. He has only one short track win, and it came right here in this race two years ago. In fact, back, they came up here and tested a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Finished second here. He has one bud pole here, and he did, like his brother, also won a Bush Series race here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Fatback told Jamie McMurray, little skinny Jamie, to go eat a hot dog. How many has Fatback had today? Inquiring minds want to know. I, I would say he was probably there when they opened the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd listen to a man named Fatback about eating hot dogs. 13th fastest for Bobby Labonte, lap one. And the second lap is just a tick slower. So his interstate battery Chevy will sit 13. Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray, Ryan Newman, and Jimmy Johnson are fastest so far. <laughs>
So 15th for Jeff Burton. Among the interested spectators in the early part of Bud Pole qualifying, Ray Evernham and his rookie protege, Casey Kane. Now, Ray's run modifieds here at Martinsville. With, of course, those big steamroller tires. They go in a lot deeper than these cup cars, but talking about transitions and talking to Casey Kane about how to get around here. And he was pretty quick in practice, Mike. Fourth quickest. As you say, he'll make his first start here. This group, they not only came here and tested, they also went to a local short track not too far away from here, Caraway Speedway, as a lot of teams did, just trying to get Casey for the feel of this tire on this type of racetrack. 2095 on his get up to speed lap. You know, that's uh, two or three tenths of what we've seen some of the quicker cars on their get up to speed lap. Ray's been a pretty happy guy around the garage area. You know, not this weekend, but all season long. To have a young driver with this kind of potential and to have Jeremy Mayfield's program on track, Bill Elliott to come in and help Casey a bit and run a few races. It's a pretty good time for Everham Motorsports. And this looks like a pretty good run. It just fell off a bit there from 2046, ninth fastest. Looks like it's gonna be about the same type yep. of lap on this second lap. 2050 actually slows down a little bit, but not a bad start for your first time at Martinsville. Yep. Car number nine, ninth fastest. For Casey Kane, who in seven, only seven career starts. This is a season's worth of accomplishments for many teams. Four top fives, two poles, five top 10 starts. And how about four finishes of third or better in seven starts? And, a lot of teams would take that. And yes, folks, he does know who Harry Gant is. <laughs> and he's not tired of completely finishing second. No, sir. <laughs> you can get used to that, can't yes, you? Yes, you can. Because that will add up at the end of the day in points. Joe Nemechek, who has 19 career starts. In NASCAR's top division here in Martinsville, the U.S. Army Chevy. Joe was 11th quickest in practice. Got his first tip, top 10 start of 2004 at Texas, and congratulations to him and his wife, Andre. They gave birth to their third child last Monday, Kennedy Grace Nemechek. I hear mom and daughter and rest of the family's doing great. Well, the stork was racing to their house. <laughs> yes, it was. That's great news. Good get up to speed lap, 2064. First lap, 2048, puts Joe 13th quickest. This team really, with Brian Pemberton, starting to show a little bit of fire here as we get seven or eight races into this season. Don't know if this lap's gonna be a whole lot better. Looks like it may actually even be slower than his first lap. And it is by six one hundredths. This is the 111 Cup race at Martinsville. 41 different winners. Richard Petty is the track's all-time winner with 15 victories. Darrell Waltrip second with 11. Another chapter in the great history of this track last fall. Kurt Busch. That's Kenny Strader inside. Rusty Wallace outside. That's Busch in the fence. Yeah, he, he had... He had all kinds of problems this day. And it all started, Mike, over on the back stretch when the caution came out, and they missed the pit road open flag. And it's almost, you know, he'd been leading the race, and it's right. like it was downhill from there. He does have a win here. In fact, he's won five of the last 10 Nextel Cup short track races. But he's never started top 10 here in seven appearances. And just what a consistent season he's had. You know, he did win Bristol. It's like a pretty good run right here. And he's completed all but one lap, and that was that one lap he got down in the Daytona 500 that he just couldn't quite make up. Right. 2038, wow. fourth quickest for Kirk. Good run. Now he lacks the pole, only 13 one hundredths of a second from knocking off Rusty Wallace. He is the fastest forward right now. But Mike, you mentioned that win a couple of years ago. We, we talk about qualifying good here. He kind of defeated that theory. He started 36. That's the furthest back a winner here has ever started. Second lap for Kurt is just three one hundred slower. Trying to get it all, and he is fourth behind one Chevy and two Dodges. Dick Bergren. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is hot everywhere, but especially here at Martinsville. Last year qualified second in the spring, third in the fall. Got four top five finishes in a row here, and seventh quick in practice. What you got for him this morning, this afternoon? Well, the 
the new tires changed our handle on the car a little bit. We haven't quite got back to where we were. Uh, well, hopefully we will. Um, it's a good tire, but we just it's, it's just changed the way our car drives a little bit. So uh, we're not quite as good as I'd like to be. I think we could be a lot better. Um, Jeff obviously shows that by how fast he runs, and uh, we just need to be there, you know, and we uh, – a top five I'd be real, real happy with in qualifying. I'm a Boston guy. I want to know if that hat's for the Boston Red Sox or if it's a Budweiser hat. Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Yeah. I try to, I like the, I like the, I like the hat because it fits good. And uh, I like Boston, but uh, Budweiser don't mind the B either. So. Yeah, my hat fits good too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony Stewart up. See what the Home Depot Chevy can do here. A winner here in 2000 and a two-time pole sitter at Martinsville. Oh, yeah, the Red Sox play the Yanks tonight on Fox. You know, this is a strange qualifying run for Tony. He ran a 20.73 on his get-up-to-speed lap. He ran a 20.73 on his first lap. That's the very first time that we have seen that. Wow. See what he does on his second lap. 20.58, so he picks it up quite a bit. Yeah, but Larry, that's... That's awful. Yeah, I don't Come on, that's 25th out of 28 for Tony Stewart, the short <laughs> track master. If you throw stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway. To no surprise, Jeff Gordon is fastest. To everyone's surprise, uh, Tony Stewart is just barely out of provisional land as Kevin Harvick comes up in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet of Richard Childress. His teammate Johnny Sauter right now is 15th out of the 28 drivers that have run so far. And Mike, I'm looking at this qualifying. This is a typical Martinsville, and it's like it keeps getting closer and closer. Jeff Gordon right now is on the pole at a 2025. You look back at Tony Stewart is a 2058. He's 21st, three tenths of a second right there. Hard to believe three tenths of a second could be 24 positions. Look at this. Look at the arrow. Oops. Other way. On Kevin Harvick, it was coming. 2041, seventh fastest for Kevin on his first lap. Kevin was 12th quickest in practice. The car that they ran or chassis, they ran at most of the short tracks back last year, including the race here in the fall. See that car wallow around side to side coming off the corner? Yeah, it's, it's not down in the racetrack. And you know, normally that can be a product of, uh, of the shock package that they actually have on the car. However, he picked it up to fourth fastest. That's what counts. Good lap. Didn't look good, but it was good. Ran good. How about Kurt Busch? Left Daytona, 16th in the points. He has climbed the ladder and comes in here as the point leader, Jeff. Well, Mike, he was telling me off camera, this is the best he ever qualified. So far here at Martinsville, you're fifth right now. Pretty happy about that. I'm happy with it, Jeff. There's been times here at Martinsville where I've come in and said, the car was great. And they're like, son, you used a provisional. <laughs> so this time around, the car was a bit tight in the center for us, and I may have tried to hustle a little bit too hard that second lap. But the car's been great off the trailer, so this industrial Irwin's tools team is looking for a solid run on Sunday. Just keep our momentum going. Leading the points right now, and you said you need a solid run right now. What would make you happy coming out of here? I'm sorry, I missed your question, Jeff. I said, you're leading the points right now. What would make you happy coming out of here? This is a track where we've, we've been really good in the past and really bad, so we need to start building a, a, a repetition of good finishes here. So with our solid run in 2002, we had some up and downs in 2003. Just a nice top 10 run. Maybe we can lead some laps. And if we don't, we just need to put a strong challenge forth to learn as many things as we can because this race will be part of our final 10 race shootout at the end of the year for the points. One of those drivers looking for the big picture, guys, and uh, he's got it going his way so far. Hey, he's got it going their way. Yeah. Scott Riggs in this 10 car for a guy that was 36th quickest in practice on his first lap, he was 10th quickest. Wow. And this looks like it's maybe going to be possibly lost a little bit off turn four, so I believe he actually yeah. slowed down just a little bit. 10th fastest for the Valvoline Chevrolet. Riggs right now is the second highest rookie in the field, right one spot behind Brendan Gaughan. Right outside turn four at Martinsville Speedway is the Trackside Speed Channel live stage. Where tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, your guests will be. We have the winner from Texas, Elliot Sadler. We have the provisional pole sitter right now, Jeff Gordon, and the man that crossed the start finish line at Atlanta in the Craftsman Truck Series race backwards, Mike Skinner, who finished second. 
driving your truck. Yeah. Yeah, backwards. <laughs> it wasn't looking pretty for a minute there. Speaking of Sadlers, <laughs> here's Hermie, Elliot's older brother from Emporia, Virginia. Started eighth here in uh, the fall of 2002. He's made five cup appearances at this racetrack with that one top 10 start. See on the hood, he's carrying the Autism Awareness Ribbon. Of course, April is Autism Awareness Month. Hermie involved in that uh, a, a whole lot on a pretty regular basis. First lap, not encouraging, 28.43. That's the slowest of 31 drivers so far. To get in the show, he's going to need more than two tenths, Larry. Yeah, and that's about what he ran in practice was a 20.84, 20.85. Now, I say to get in the show, this team does have a provisional available, as does uh, just about every car but Stanton Barrett, who must get in on time. So Hermie does pick it up to 27th out of 31 with a 2064. Dick? The pole winner for the Daytona 500 has the best average start of all drivers. How about today with this brand new race car? Well, Martinsville's not my best racetrack. Uh, the guys have got me a really good car here. I just need to get a good lap. Uh, we we're about 19th in practice, so if I could get that up to maybe 15th or uh, maybe into the top 10, it'd be good for us. I'm trying to keep my qualifying average going, but uh, I think the National Guard car is going to be decent, and uh, I'm just excited the guys are working real hard on it. And he's driving it real well, too, Mike Joy. Has the best average start of any cup driver this season. Set on the pole for the Daytona 500. Andy Hillenberg carrying the Kevin Triplett for Congress, 9th District, Virginia, by the way. Number 84. Andy may be the busiest driver in all of Nextel Cup. He runs uh, a racing school based out of Charlotte Motor Speedway, Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte, called Fast Track, and also does a lot of commercial shoots and had, was integral in the production of the NASCAR IMAX movie. And speaking of movies, the Dale Earnhardt movie that's coming out, uh, all of his instructors have been hired, and they've hired, uh, leased a lot of his equipment to, uh, that they're going to use in the shooting of that movie. That movie uh, is being produced, a uh, made-for-TV movie, being produced uh, by and for ESPN. Boy, Ooh. Andy Hillenberg just, just all over the place, and he's going to be the slowest of our 32 cars that has qualified. Now, Andy will have a provisional, and it looks like he's going to need to use it. That's going to be good news for Stanton Barrett because it looks like Stanton yeah. Barrett will race with us on Sunday. Correct. Stanton is in on time. So now that means that either Todd Bodine or Morgan Shepard would be the going home car. We'll have to wait and see. Jeff? I'm down here with Kevin Harvick, who is very happy to see me, guys. Can you believe that? Kevin's happy to see me. I'm always happy to see you, Hammond. I think what you say sometimes when I'm not looking at you. Well, that's probably true, but uh, GM Goodwin Chevrolet is really good. We didn't we didn't get a chance to make any real good qualifying runs. We spent the whole time in race trim, and the car was, was really good in race trim. So um, that was a good good lap for us, a good couple laps for us, and just a little bit free up off, but other than that, uh, the car was, was really good. So happy to get a good spot for us. That's important here. As he said, guys, he's happy, and I'm happy too. So let's keep it going. Fourth fastest, Kevin Harvick. Happy Hammond and happy Harvick. Robbie Gordon waiting to go. Mark Martin has not yet had his two laps yet as Dale Jarrett in the Robert Yates UPS Ford. He was 26 quickest in practice. And double checking, Hermie Sadler will not need a provisional. He's in the show. He's, he has beaten six cars, which is where you need to be to end up 38th or better. Dale's first lap is 19th quickest at a 2053. This is a brand new race car. They did come up here and test it. Dale made his first Nextel Cup career start here in April of 1984. He actually slows down just a little bit on lap two. So Dale right now will be 19th quickest. And that puts him fourth among the Fords behind Kurt Busch, his teammate Elliot Sadler, and Ricky Rudd. His first start came in the 02 car. Do you remember whose that was? I do not. No. We'll find out. Greg Fielding is scrambling as we speak. <laughs> now, Dale had a full-time Busch team at the time, so it may have been something that that group put together. I just, I cannot remember who that was with. Yeah. Emmanuel Zervakis? How about that? How about that? Well-known uh, driver and later car builder, team owner out of Richmond, Virginia. Very, very smart man. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Bud Chevy. Comes in here third in the standings. Let's get up to speed. That's pretty good, Mike. 2059. Remember, Jeff Gordon ran about a 2068. He's, Junior's working on a string of six straight top 10 starts here, two of which were front row and two of which were second row. He was good shape, fifth quick as he was good shape. We've seen so many people just lose it on that last little bit of turn four, which tells us when Jeff Gordon put the throttle down off turn four, he was able to stay in it. You see some drivers, Larry, pick that curve going in. Is that to set the car, or is it just being off a couple inches on your line? It's being off just a little yeah. bit. Normally hitting that curve will upset the car, but i tell you what else could be throwing these guys a curveball down in turn four, is there's kind of a, they put a tunnel right there a couple of races ago, and there's a pretty good hump right there, and that could be throwing everyone a little bit of a curveball. Junior moves up to fourth on his second lap. As you see, his last four finishes here have been awfully good. You're on TV. Guy in the blue shirt is our uh, NASCAR on Fox director, Artie Kempner, with his son Jack atop the Hollywood Hotel. Cubby uh, taking a the shot there. As they watch the cars go around to Martinsville, and that, that's one of the best views in the house. Archie Vasily's in the hot seat today since Artie is uh, in spectate mode. Artie's a very busy man because yeah. when uh, you have NFL on Fox, he's also the director on those football games. See Ricky Craven in the 32 car sideways off turn four, but a, uh, just a so-so lap, 20.59, 26 quickest. Ricky Craven in the tied Chevy. 26th on that first lap with a 20.59. I don't think he'll be very happy with that. They built this car specifically with Marksville in mind. They came up here and tested for two days. And he actually slows down quite a bit on his second lap. Jeff Hammond with the driver who right now sits fourth. That's right, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He got out of the car and crowd was cheering and you got a big smile on your face. Car looked pretty good. Yeah, the car was really, really good right there. I might have eased into the car a little too much. It cost a little bit of time, but Center, center rotated good. It had great forward bite up off the corner. We've been fighting that a little bit all day, so uh, good work by my bud crew to get the car a little bit better for that uh, that run right there. Now you told me when you got out of the car, that's what you exactly wanted to do was get a solid start position because you knew you knew how to get a good pit here. Yeah, I just made sure the first lap was real, real clean, and I, then I went a little harder the second lap, and they're about, they're about the same in time. So, uh, you know, I'm real happy. Uh, a little better than we ran in, in uh, practice, and... Uh, you know, just get us a good start. We've got a, we've got a good racetrack for us. We've got four top fives in a row here, so look forward to Sunday. Try to keep that string alive, guys. Greg Biffle, who has the highest average starting spot of any Nextel Cup driver this season in the National Guard Ford. Yeah, I mean, he started in the top ten in six of the seven races this year. Including one pole, and his lap kind of went all over the place. Right there, 2055, 23rd quickest. And you know what happens? You heard in Dell Earnhardt Jr.'s interview, Kurt Busch's interview, a lot of times that first lap is good, Mike, and the crew chief will give you the lap time, and you think, well, I can go a little quicker this time because yep. the tires feel better, and you just step across the line of overdriving it just a little bit. 2052, as Jeff Gordon, who was fastest so far, looks on. I think what happened with the Fox tracks with Biffle, it looked like he was easy into the corner, which set his his position way to the right, and then rocketed off the corner, which since we have sensors all around the racetrack with Fox tracks, then he was really fast off the corner, shot him way to the left, and his lap ended up right in the middle. And, th and that's normally the fast way around Marksville, is if we talked about it earlier, if you overdrive the entrance, you can't get off the corner either. There's a fine line, though, between underdriving and overdriving getting in the corner. Here's Bullseye, Casey Mears, in the target Dodge for Chip Ganassi with Felix Sabatis racing. Had his career best finish in Texas two weeks ago, seventh place. Casey was 23rd quickest in practice. His car just would not stay. He had a good get up to speed lap, but it looked like it just would not stay down in one and two on this first lap, but it's looking pretty good right here. And what our people are telling us is the concrete track temperature is coming down just a little bit. It's down just below 100 degrees. 
Casey, 11th quickest on that first lap at 20.43, so that'll be a good qualifying run for Casey. 11th fastest. Fifth among the Dodges so far. And the second lap almost mirrors the first. So Casey Mears 11th, the Dodges ahead of him, Jamie McMurray second, Ryan Newman third, Mayfield ninth, and gone tenth. Next up is a driver who had a very unique experience on Thursday evening up in Roanoke, Virginia. Driver of the Net Zero Chevrolet, Ward Burt. The Roanoke Ballet Theater has put on a, a very unique production. Think you've seen everything? Watch this. NASCAR Ballet. The dancers are dressed as cars, and the stage, an oval racetrack. Ward Burton. That's Frank Kimmel with Ward Burton, who did Here's color commentary for the event on this oval-shaped track. They promise spin-outs and crashes, and one dancer would go to victory lane. I gotta get to the bottom of this whole deal here. Yeah, I heard they had cautions, pit stops, the whole deal. And if you're a fan, the Roanoke Ballet Theater will have two performances this Saturday night of the NASCAR Ballet. Rick Mast is scheduled to do the color commentary, so it's only about an hour north of here. It's going to be a pretty good lap for Ward, I believe, especially considering he was 31st quickest in practice. I'll say six quickest. 20-38. Larry, you better take those truck drivers of yours and send them to the ballet. I will say. Yeah, you see the tracker, how much has fallen off. He was pretty much completely sideways off of turn two that last time. Same deal. Crew chief probably said 2038 position six. Well, I can get me a little more here, and it normally don't work out. <laughs> hey, but that's a strong lap. Yes, it is. Sometimes sideways is fast. Look at that counter steer there. When those wheels are cut to the right, it's not a good thing. Uh -huh. Welcome back to Budweiser Pole Qualifying from Martinsville, Virginia. Jeff Gordon, or Jamie McMurray, Ryan Newman fastest so far, but here is Mark Martin, who's had a good deal of success here. He has three pole position starts and two victories at Martinsville in 36 attempts. But Mike, you know, it's, it's like they, they've kind of lost touch with this place because in his, Mark's first 28 starts here, his average start was a little over eight. In the last eight races, it's been average 20 seconds. Wow. We were talking about birthdays earlier. Pretty unique situation. Jack Roush and Robert Yates joining forces with the engine program this year. Both of them celebrate their birthday this coming Monday. Mark's 20th quickest, 2048 on his first lap. This looks a little better in. Then the Fox Tracker heads to the right mark with three consecutive poles here in the fall of 1990. And he swept both poles in 1991. And Mike, you know, we were talking about how tight qualifying is. That's another reason that our tracker to bottom moves around so much is because with 39 cars qualified so far, there's so many of them, but so close together in those segments around this racetrack. Yeah, some of that movement can only be a, a tenth or two tenths of a second, but it's all the way to the other side of the board. Yeah, or hundredths of a second. The Viagra Taurus is 19th for Mark Martin, and he is the fourth fastest Ford out qualifying some of his Roush teammates like Greg Biffle, Jeff Burton, and Matt Kenseth. There's the cat in the hat, car owner Jack Roush. And there's the man right there that only has to wait for about five more cars, Jeff Gordon. The man in the catbird seat. <laughs> yes, right it now. is. Kyle Petty. Martinsville's always been a special track for the Petties. Richard is the track's all-time winner with 15. Don't think anybody's ever going to catch, catch him in that department. Yeah, I mean, Petty Enterprises as a whole, 110 races here, they have 19 wins. Richard competed in 67 races here at Martinsville. And his father, Kyle's granddad, Lee Petty, won here in 1953 and 1959. Kyle has never won here. He has one butt pole here. I don't think he's going to be very happy with this qualifying run. 2066, 35th quickest. So far, Andy Hillenberg has been bumped out of the top 38, and that run by Kyle Petty bumped Morgan Shepard. 
possibly even out of the field. Yeah, right now it's between Shepard and Todd Bodine as to which would be the one car to go home. The only car that needed to race their way in on time, Stanton Barrett has done so. Kyle's second lap is almost a tenth quicker, so he is 30th quickest. Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia. Bud Pool qualifying underway. 40 drivers have had a chance at the clocks. We're going to go down to our ballet on Fox expert, Jeff Hammond. I'm down here right now with Ward Burton. And uh, Ward, big pickup right there for the uh, Net Zero Chevrolet. Two tenths right there puts you in pretty good position. Six fastest. Uh, thank you, Jeff. It was a uh, good call by Tony and Ken and Mark and David and all the guys back here working on that Net Zero Chevrolet. We really weren't happy with it doing practice and uh, we got a little bit more forward bite right there for the first lap. We made gear changes to sway bar, rear bar, rear bar changes, a lot of different changes. I wish I could put my finger on which one did what, but uh, we're learning, we're getting there. Speaking of learning, uh, can you share with us what you learned the other night during the ballet? Because it definitely helped you qualifying. <laughs> I learned that it uh, doesn't matter what it is, community call is always good, even if it's not at my home in Halifax. Uh, Roanoke and the uh, ballet that they put on was really spectacular, and their, their athletes, they put a lot into it. Well, there you have it right there, Mike. I mean, we got athletes that are uh, ballerinas and race car drivers. <laughs> Look like a lot of fun. You going Saturday night, Jeff? Uh, I've got us a couple front row tickets. You, me, Larry Mack, as well as DW. Is he going? He's probably in it. You don't have him. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rotman has just qualified uh, James Finch's car, the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Dodge. And Rutman, who won a poll here for Ron Benfield in uh, 1984, <laughs> has timed in 36. It looks more like the turkey walk right there. <laughs> Was that a pirouette or a pas de deux? What, what? <laughs> You know that tape's going to come back to haunt you on yes, Sunday. Yes, it will. You know it will. Robbie Gordon, the singular wireless Chevy. Mike, this could be the biggest bullet left that Jeff Gordon will have to dodge. Robbie was six quickest in practice. With that car, all the Childress cars, Larry, have gotten a really good jump off the corner. And, and I'm sure that's a lot due to the to the engine combination. As you see, Robbie Gordon right there, we talked about hitting the curb. You saw how much it threw the car sideways and just killed your lap. But Spinning Clendenin and Danny Lawrence, that group, you know, Martinsville, a, a good engine combination for here can really make or break you as well. It's not all about just making big horsepower numbers. But as we, wow, 21st for Robbie Gordon, 2050 on the first lap. He didn't now get that near car, that curve that time. No, that car doesn't look happy. Not at all, not at all, especially for, as we mentioned, a car that was sixth quickest in practice. We've seen races here, Larry, where a driver would have a plug wire fall off and his lap times improve because the power he had left, he could get to the ground. I've had races where I wanted to yank a plug wire off. <laughs> <laughs> Second lap for Robbie he is a little slower. Uh, he is 21st on the board with that Chevrolet. Well, four cars to go. And the going home question is Morgan Shepard or Todd Bodine. Todd right now is 38th, which officially is the bubble. But if two more cars are slower than Todd's 2071, he's in the race and Morgan Shepard goes home. If not, then it's uh, Todd's car, the uh, number 98 that has the least amount of provisional points and would go to the house. Jeff Green. Richard Petty's famous number 43, Cheerios Dodge. I think Richard won all those 15 races here driving car number 43. He did, in his career, occasionally drive a 42 or a 44, which were Petty cars. And let's see what the former Bush Series champion can do here. This group came up here and tested, but he was only 35th quickest in practice. I'm wrong again. <laughs> Richard's first win driving one of Danny Lee's cars, came in car number 42A. His father drove 42. He drove 42A that day and won. Am I going to have to get you DW's book and let you start reading it a little bit? Is that in it? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> if it's not, I know it's in one of Greg Fielden's books. <laughs> now that run by Jeff Green did bump Todd Bodine out of the top 38 and put Joe Rutman on the bubble. 33rd fastest for Jeff with a 2060 on his second lap. So there are three cars to go. Quickest, 
Jeff Gordon's the fastest Chevy, first overall. Jamie McMurray is second. He's the quickest Dodge. And the quickest Ford is Kurt Busch in seventh. And I'm sorry, computer skipped a beat. We have one car to go. And it's this one, Kirk Shelmerdine driving the Freddie B's. Number 72. Kurt was the slowest of our 44 cars that practiced. Now at Texas, Kirk had a Harley Davidson dealer there in Texas on the hood of the car, and uh, he's left the uh, black and orange shield on the hood for this race. Kirk's car just, you can't really keep it down in the corner. You know, you run, run right around, right around the bottom of that racetrack or maybe about a half a groove off. Of course, Kurt, Kurt Schilmerdine, he has been the victory lane here in Martinsville because he was the crew chief for Dale Earnhardt. Uh, Dale won here six times. Kurt was crew chief for several of those wins. Gets a smoother exit off the corner that time. 21.62, that will be the slowest with one lap to go. Unless Kurt really picks it up, looks like Joe Rutman will be safely in the show. And Todd Bodine would be the going home car. Because Shelmerdine, even though he's the slowest car to qualify, does have enough owner points to garner a provisional starting spot. Second lap is faster, but does not move him up off the final spot in the order. Well, guess who is on the bud pole? <laughs> and uh, Dick Berger, and is anybody surprised that our Budweiser poll winner is again Jeff Gordon? Yeah, for the fourth year in a row, and he just saved my life. I almost fell down the ladder coming up here to interview him, and he caught me. come to you, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it more important to start on the poll or more important to have your pick of the first pit? They're both real important. Um, I would say that pick on, on pit road is probably the most important part, but man, what an awesome job by this DuPont Chevrolet team. I couldn't be more proud of them. I mean, to, to come up here with a new tire and go out second, um, you know, it was just a great effort to, to win our, uh, what is this, our third pole in a row or something? I mean, this fourth. is fourth. And, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, great way to start our Martinsville weekend. You know, we've been pumped up and ready for this one. Luckily, we had some momentum coming out of Texas, had a nice off weekend. We're, uh, we're ready to uh, put a great race car out there on the track tomorrow and see what we got for the race. Let's straighten that out. It's fourth consecutive spring pole, third straight pole, because you won the pole last fall. And the truck said you were involved in a Miss Somebody or Other contest as a judge? Uh, yeah, yeah, I missed USA. I, I uh, went out there and uh, I don't know. I don't think I'd necessarily pick the winner, but I had a little bit to do with it. So it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it very much. And uh, like I said, it was a great off week for me. I went to the Bahamas, did some diving. You know how I love those sharks. And I uh, went to the Masters, saw Phil Mickelson uh, knocking that putt on 18. Went and did uh, the Miss USA pageant. It's been a pretty good week so far. You don't get too many weekends like that one. No, no. You know, you got to take advantage of the off time that we have and uh, because there's not much of it. And uh, I was able to take full advantage of it and well rested and, and pumped up. And today, uh, this is a great way to cap off, uh, you know, that that week and, and to get back into a, what's going to be a long season and, and try to charge our way back to the front. I bet he had the best weekend of any driver that uh, had the weekend off last weekend. Mike? That crams an awful lot into a league weekend off. Let's see, Larry, you and I went to Nashville and then to Easter dinner with our families, and, and that was kind of about it. And Hammond went dancing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gordon is our Budweiser Bowl winner in Martinsville. Cody could come back to home. Speed Channel's coverage of NASCAR Budweiser Poll qualifying from Martinsville, Virginia has been brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. By Advance Auto Parts. Around these parts, trouble doesn't stand a chance. We're ready in advance. And by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Ready to ballet the night away, Jeff Hammond. Well, I've caught up with the other Gordon, and uh, Robert, we talk so much about the brakes here being important during the race, but they also are important during qualifying, as you were telling me, after your little lap. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know what the deal was. I guess maybe when you uh, go do a single lap and the, the brakes get to cool down and stuff, I tire hopped the rear tires getting into one uh, both laps, and um, that was just enough to, uh, to get me offline. A little disappointed. We slowed down about a tenth and a half uh, from where we were in practice. I think our practice speed would have put us seventh or eighth, so um, 
you know, we're, we're, we're obviously disappointed, but um, about mid-pack, and we can race our way to the front from there. But as you were telling me uh, during break right there, the main thing about it when you come to a racetrack like Martinsville, you got to have fun, and you got to like the racetrack, and you like this place. I do like Martinsville. Um, you know, it's, it's 90 mile an hour. It doesn't seem like a lot of speed, but, man, you're hustling through the corners. Uh, you know, you, you got to get in. You got to get the car rotated through the middle and get power down. Racing here is a lot of fun because especially with these new tires, they seem to wear out. The guys that can roll the power down and, and not spin the rear tires, the guys are going to be fast in the long runs. And that's uh, what we're going to work on our car tomorrow to make it do a happy hour and hopefully be in good shape for the race. As he was telling me, guys, this place reminds him of Turn 11 at, uh, at Finneon, and he kind of likes that place also, Dick Bergen. Well, I'm with Jamie McMurray, who qualified on the outside of the front row. We've been watching Jeff Hammond doing a little bit of dance. What do you, what do you think, Jamie? Can, you want to dance? I've only danced a couple of times in my life, and there's no way I'm going to do it at a racetrack. <laughs> All America wants to see you do it. Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, no, I'm really not going to participate. <laughs> uh, the, old, the old wounded chicken trying to run away. Yeah, I, um, I just, I, I never got that skill. I can't sing or dance. I, would, I wish I could, but um, just, just no chance. But you sure can drive a race car. How'd you do that uh, run today? We, you know what? I, I feel like we got a little bit lucky. We, we unloaded more about 35th on the board, and... Um, just kept making changes to the car, and Donnie made some really good calls in practice, and um, like I say, got a little bit lucky. How much did the hot dogs have to do with it? A lot, I believe. I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have a hot dog a day for the next couple of days. I just problem is I ate it about nine hours ago, and I can still taste it. Isn't that wonderful? It has staying power. I don't know about that. It's good though. <laughs> it's good. It is good. It's health food for sure, Mike. <laughs> I don't know. There's a look at. Uh... Jamie's Haviland Dodge. Here's a look at the front row. Jeff Gordon, third straight pole. Jamie Murray, first front row short track start. And we'll give you the whole starting lineup when we come back. Welcome back to the short track that thinks it's a super speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. They've been racing here since 1949. Jeff Gordon and Jamie McMurray will start on the front row for Sunday's Advance Auto Parts 500. Let's go back down trackside to Jeff Hammond. Dan and Mark Martin. Mark, uh, here at Martinsville, you man, you've run some awful good races here, but here lately you guys have kind of struggled. How's your car going to be this weekend, you think? I think it'll be good in race trim. Pat Trison has a history of, uh, you know, having some really strong race cars at this place. So uh, Wally Brown uh, in there helping him and uh, all his, you know, the whole Viagra team. I think it'll be okay. Um, I'm pleased with where we qualified, 19th. Uh, give us a reasonable starting spot, and uh, we'll try to get this thing. We always race better than you qualify, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. I've asked a lot of drivers about Martinsville. Do you like racing here? I hate it. I wish I would give anything if they didn't come, come here, if this wasn't on the schedule. I know I've won twice here, and people remind me of that, but um, I don't like being at a racetrack where you can't get up on the wheel and drive harder and get something for it. And uh, I've never figured out how to get anything for it. I'm, I only can run as fast as my car will run, and I don't like being handcuffed like that. Well, guys, I pretty much says it right there. He don't like it, but he does know how to win here. There are fellows that don't and fellows that do love Martinsville, especially all the fans. This hillside is right behind the Norfolk Southern Railroad track along the back stretch. There's the back straightaway, the back, sta uh, back stretch stands and the speedway and campers everywhere. There's the rail line where they drag coal to the shore and goods back imported from overseas in those box cars and the Clay Earls Tower. This track was set at the end of a short dead end street off US 220 more than 50 years ago and it still exists kind of in the midst of a neighborhood. There are homes right up toward the racetrack where folks, if you're walking in from parking out on the highway, folks will have coffee and donuts for you in the morning. It's just, it's a nice family place to come to the races. And Jeff Gordon, among all, loves it here. Yeah, and, and, and I'm a little surprised at Mark Martin's interview because we talked about it. We related to a road course. In, in the mid-'80s, road courses in Martinsville, you always knew Mark Martin was going to be like Jeff Gordon's doing right now because this is a driver's racetrack, and the great news is the forecast for all three days is gorgeous. Oh, the flowers are in bloom. It's perfect race weather. As Jeff Gordon talks to Satellite Radio, here is the lineup. Jamie McMurray, first time out, first time front row starter here. The Rocket, Junior, Harvick, great run for Ward Burton there. Kurt Busch, the point leader, Jimmy Johnson, Elliott Sadler, and Jeremy Mayfield. And what I thought you see here, 110 races at Martinsville, I only see two previous winners in that top 10, Jeff Gordon and Kurt Busch. Well, maybe the winner will come from the midfield. There's Casey Kane, the rookie that's had such great success so far this season, back uh, in 15th in midfield. 
a lot of our rookies up there in the top 15. And you see uh, Greg Biffle's average start number will fall a bit. He's 24. We tried to talk to Tony Stewart, but Tony had left after posting a very disappointing 30th place run. And there's Matt Kenseth, about where you'd expect, row 15, but don't worry, folks. That car moves forward on race day, not backwards. It's going to take a little bit of strategy, though, to get him up there. Joe Rutman got the final spot on time next to Hermie Sadler. Stanton Barrett did time his way in as he had to do. And you see the provisional starters there. That means that only Todd Bodine and the Lucas Oil Ford fails to make the field here at Martinsville. Coming up tomorrow, is that Hammond dancing? That's me when I used to be a crew chief here. <laughs> on FX, Nextel Cup final practice, 11 a.m. And the Kroger 250, including their DW in the field, on speed tomorrow afternoon. Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Short track racing here at Martinsville, then right back to Speed Channel for all the news. Don't forget trackside tonight, live from the Speedway. Don't laugh, Mike. This place would do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it will. <laughs> We'll see you the rest of the weekend with racing from Martinsville across the Fox Networks.